Wagfu, advertised as a humorous yet action-packed turn-based tactical MMORPG, it boasts over 8,000 mostly positive reviews on Steam, emphasizing many unique classes, expansive PvE options, a special ecological system, a player world-building mode, a robust political system, and more, with reasonably low system requirements to play. In this video, we explore the question, is Wagfu fun? Wakfu is a turn-based tactical MMORPG neighbor to Dofus, and a MMORPG in development called Wavin, all by and comma, their developer studio. Moreover, Wakfu has its own animated series viewable on Netflix. There is a ton of world building, and if you're a lore junkie, you'll find much to love in Wakfu. At this point, you may ask, what does Wakfu mean? We'll get to that in a moment. The MMORPG is free to play with an optional subscription and is still in active development with a loyal international community. Its combat system is similar to Final fantasy tactics, yet with unique spins. If you love to harvest and craft, you'll never run out of activities to do. The fundamental gameplay loop is simple to understand, yet difficult to master. If you love turn-based battles, harvesting, crafting, and engaging in the socio-political fabric of online communities, Wakfu may be just what you're looking for. We'll discuss all of these topics and more in the video. If you have a question or are a veteran of the MMO and notice that I missed something, please let us know in the comments. Let's begin. The UI is clean with responsive sound effects. The launcher even has a dark mode. When playing, it tells you your account status, which is both an advertisement for their subscription and a gentle reminder that you're not surprised if your membership has elapsed. Under my character's level, you'll see a X3. Your lower level alt receive an experience bonus, which is not hidden behind a paywall. Wakfu's free-to-play offering is, in fact, very generous. We'll explore the store in more details later. You can create up to five characters by default, yet you must pay to access more, similar to Guild Wars 2. There's a multi-accounting option, thus foreshadowing the use and approval of multi-boxing. This implies that gameplay is likely group-oriented and perhaps rather grindy. Since the maximum level is 230, one wonders how common it is for dedicated players to play and pay for multiple accounts. Perhaps we'll find out. It's been a while since I last played, so I create a new character to give a proper first impression. There are 18 non-redundant, non-gender lock classes, and each draws from various combat styles such as crowd control, healing, summoning, support, etc. Roles are important, and performing them well is pivotal to success, as we'll see shortly. The less complex classes are at the top and descend into more complicated counterparts. No classes are locked behind a paywall, and each is visually distinct. Cosmetically, most classes only have eight hairstyles to choose from, and only one starting costume. Color customization is robust, as each color box modifies a specific area or gear. I wonder if additional cosmetic options become available during the course of gameplay. The introductory movie is superb, and there's no surprise that it's a fully rendered anime. Since Wakfu does have two series on Netflix, which started airing in 2017, and its most recent season has been successfully crowdfunded. You need to pay attention because this cinematic is more than simply studying artistry at work, as it's giving you exceptionally important details about who your character is and why your character begins where they will. I'll explain more in a moment, yet so far I'm impressed. Wakfu is a successor to Dofus and Kama's first MMORPG, and lore is being communicated here about which players of their first title would know more. At this point, Wakfu apparently is a primordial energy of the cosmos, yet we'll soon learn that it's more more nuanced than that. Immediately after the cinematic is over, the tutorial begins. Let's hope it's good.
out of the gate I love. The game gives me a goal to achieve while offering just enough information to figure out how to achieve it. The gameplay algebra is finely tuned. In the image at the top left, the image shows that this game is based on squares, like RuneScape. I need to move my character via the default left mouse button. There is also a quest marker on my tune to let me know where to run directionally with that same marker over the end point. Thus, the game thus far not only tells me in which direction, yet also at which point in particular I should go. So far, the game's ability to communicate how to play has been phenomenal. I hope it continues. Notice this. If you click on the square on which you need to go, your character stops a few away. The subtlety here is impressive. Obviously, I didn't want to travel exactly to that square since I wanted to simply speak to the NPC. However, I nonetheless clicked on that particular square. The designers here added this assumption into the controls, thus indicating they are aware of what players meant to do instead of what they actually did. But it gets better. In a friendly context, combat begins. As mentioned earlier, Wakfu uses a turn-based system akin to Final Fantasy Tactics or Divinity Original Sin. The combat tutorial is so well done. While I'll describe in more detail in a moment, at this point notice that the NPC does not even attack me. The game is focused on teaching me only how to move and attack during combat, and that's it. The pedagogy is using the crawl, walk, run model, and that now I understand the first step of the system without feeling overwhelmed by learning the entire structure at once. Moreover, the text from the NPC is class specific, which helps ground the tutorial in their form of realism. You can tell that there is immense depth to the combat system, even though this form is restricting 90% of the entire feature set. You wonder at this point, what else the 90% entails? We're introduced to two important concepts after the tutorial. The first foreshadows a unique system in Wagfu, balance. While it's impossible to say at this point how impactful it is, players can apparently over farm creatures to the point of extinction. Players must work together to balance the population of flora and fauna, and our guide's passing comment about the system tips us off to this feature. Moreover, we're clued into his own quest, and we wait to see how it will pan out in this astral plane of existence. Immediately following the combat tutorial, I can't access other game menus. I think this limitation is genius, because it keeps my focus on learning the game in easily digestible chunks while not being distracted with systems that don't yet matter. Pay attention to what happens to this little creature. Let's watch. If you didn't catch it, its accent color was turquoise after drinking from the spring, yet upon coming close to the purple ore, it was changed. Our guide, whose name we'll learn in a moment, has to revise his notion that Oliveron is the villain behind the transformation of these creatures. This is important because a central component of Wakfu's storytelling is that heroes are not all virtuous and villains are not entirely evil. This makes the narrative flexible and believable, yet causes us to wonder how we fit into the larger cosmic story of Wakfu. Time for first real combat. I love that the cursor upon hover changes to remind me that I have to click the left mouse button to initiate combat. The NPC tells me that I must fight to continue, which keeps the player focused on what's important. More combat elements are introduced, such as pre-positioning. This becomes important in just a few seconds. The brilliance of waiting until now to teach the player the importance of starting with a tactical positional advantage is that the position did not matter in the first combat scenario, and the lesson would have been lost. However, since players will need to leverage positional supremacy in this battle to win, it forces the lesson to be learned. You wonder if they hired a psychologist to guide their tutorial's pacing. But as combat continues, what do other people think about Wakfu? Let's read some reviews. Amazing game, but not for anyone. You need brain. Without this equipment, just go play Fortnite. This game has tons of quests, a nice story, perfect ecosystem, best community, and really hard boss fights. Free to play and no pay to win game, no Korea game, no auto move to lop god for new players with courage to try something new. Lots of great things in this game, but sadly, I cannot recommend it to others. This is from the perspective of a free to play player. I have not yet spent a penny on this game. For those who are new to Wakfu, first time making an account using Steam and still have no idea what your ID username is, your Ankama login ID is your email address that you are using for Ankama. Just type your full email address in login user and then your password. Before you log in, make sure you turn off account protection and Ankama website under the security section. And also please certify your account with required detail. This is a thousand monkeys working at a thousand computers. Soon they'll deliver the greatest game of all time. It's coded in Java. It froze, you stupid monkey. Don't do it. 
this game will lure you with its awesome art and nice gameplay. But the more you'll play, you'll realize how Uncommon is run. It's broken in a fundamental level. Every update breaks things to the point it turned exponential. I have put a lot of time into this game, I admit. It does speak to an extremely small crowd due to the nature of the genre of the game, plus the amount of grind you must devote. I still have a long way to go before max level. Current level 144, max is 170. At the time of this recording, the max level is 230. So you see it does take a long time. If you are fans of Disgaea slash Fire Emblem slash other turn-based strategy games, it may or may not be for you. You must not enter the game with the wrong mindset, and you must find others to play with. The content of the game becomes very difficult, and without other players to team up with, you are going to have a bad time. The community-driven aspect of the game is amazing. In this game has one of the best communities I've been a part of. Play as cute kitty. Lick things to deal damage. Create three kitty characters and lick all the things. Put kitties in kitty costumes. Kitties can summon smaller kitties fishing. After 2,560 hours, I'm starting to understand the controls. Whack F you. While some disagree about the quality of updates or the ease of which to play if through Steam, there is a common correlation of hundreds to thousands of hours to enjoy within the metaverse of Wakfu. This game seems particularly well suited for those with ample time to devote to such a rich world. During the next battle scene, even more combat mechanics are slowly introduced, such as flanking bonuses. This battle is significant because you will lose if you don't pay attention. I can't damage the monster, so the game tells me why. This battle is actually difficult, and I feel like I may die, and it's Literally the first time an NPC can fight back. This step in the tutorial is critical because the only way to win is to demonstrate that you understand what the game is teaching you. I'm not entirely sure that I'll win, and I think that's great. It honors the player's intelligence, its combat system's integrity, and the veracity of its tutorial. You won't find dumbed down PvE here, and I'm excited to experience more. After narrowly winning, I'm given an emote as a reward. Some of them confer functional benefits, like HP regen. Good to know. I can hear whispers in the distance as recently departed souls travel through the mists of the Wakfu. Wakfu and Stasis are this MMORPG's version of yin and yang. Disruption to this balance is the source of all conflict. I am now presented with my first group encounter. The mobs layer nicely, as each possesses its own role with both strengths and weaknesses that are implied by the design of the creature. The smaller yet flying creature is arranged, whereas the tougher, bulky mob is tanky and prefers to fight in melee. I have to prioritize my kill sequence correctly in order to win while managing the lessons learned in the prior two tutorials. Imagine learning all of this at once. It can be overwhelming because the whole is only digestible if you understand the smaller individual parts. Let's see if I can win. I level up and the game teaches me why that's important and what I can do about it. In fact, it becomes a bona fide quest step and is reiterated by Atomai, the guide. UI design is phenomenal. Display abilities has a lovely animated graphic drawing my attention. There are four primary attributes with many related secondary statistics. The game recommends investing into HP, so I did. I didn't test if you could choose another option, yet since I'm already so squishy, it made contextual sense regardless. But what happens next shows the skill of comedy writing present in the design team. Nah. I'm given a quest reward and I love that the animations show the gift being given. This emotive transitions the player focus towards inventory management, which is understandable since this is the first time I've been given anything. I think that some game developers and even players make assumptions about how MMO inventory systems work. While on the whole there are broad similarities, there are also important differences that must be explained to the player. So far, Wakfu is a masterclass in game design for teaching players their systems. Continuing the trend of humor, the developers add puns to the names of items. I notice that each item has secondary effects, so I wonder if build crafting is similar to Guild Wars 2 in that you're going to be stacking particular secondary statistics to emphasize certain effects of skills. Since every moment has been purposeful thus far, I speculate that the foreshadowing here is intended. I can see that you can equip additional bags eventually, so inventory management later becomes important. Additionally, you can shatter items, and there is a separate inventory for quest items. However, none of these features are currently being highlighted, so I anticipate that they'll be useful later. At this point, you can reset your character attribute points. And First, I thought that the game bugged since there's no obvious feedback, which is unusual, 
Yet when you check your distribution, you can see that the game refunded your point. Not only that, Wagfu allows you to entirely remake your character if you're unhappy so far. What an excellent feature! After speaking to a Tatamai, the world opens up, yet just titillatingly so. The world map is sufficiently vague to keep the zone mysterious, yet useful enough to give me enough information to answer the question I had in mind. Where do I go next? As you walk past the guide, various frescoes are available to read. The execution is genius. They not only display the mythically rich story of Wagfu, yet also foreshadow game features to the player. Various gods or heroes are the patron or progenitor of various skills or combat prowess. Remember these details because they'll be important later. The next tutorial is testing whether or not I can parse the topology to navigate my character properly. In addition, I'm also tasked with interacting with the flora. I wonder if this is the first step towards learning how to harvest materials similar to how combat was explored in multiple phases. Even though this quest is teaching about movement and interaction, I love that the graphics cleanly transition each tree from the effects of stasis to Wakfu. This is visual storytelling at its finest, and I can't wait to see how they masterfully craft the player's narrative through the visual arts. After leveling up past 4, combat opens up tremendously. Just like with combat or navigating the world, the game introduces you to your class in stages. Beacons fundamentally change how Kras engage in combat, since they are both an HP sponge and also effectively turn single target abilities into AoEs. Moreover, loot earned is automatically displayed over your head upon success, which functions as a non-monetized auto-loot. But before we discuss Wakfu's dungeons, remember when I said we'd explore the cash shop in more detail? Now's a good time. The microtransaction store appears mostly cosmetic and convenience driven. A monthly membership is less than $7, which may be the most affordable subscription in the MMORPG genre. It's similar to Albion Online's membership. Ultimately, the subscription is more about saving you time because as we'll see in a bit, you can add your other characters as party members, so you're leveling most of your account simultaneously. At $7, it's pretty difficult to complain about the value of the membership, although I could see why there are potential and infringements on the pay-to-win conversation, especially since there are forms of PvP. However, if a player is wanting to competitively play Wagfu, I struggle to see the issue of paying a mere $7 to fast-track your account's progression. Their free-to-play version is one of the most generous I've seen. After completing the overworld introduction, I am introduced to dungeons. These are a series of rooms or encounters that must be successfully completed sequentially in order to obtain the rewards at the end. Moreover, you have modular control over their difficulty for a chance of better loot, similar to Diablo 3's rifts. Random opportunities occur, similar to random limit breaks in Final Fantasy, to give you a minor power-up, ranging from barrier HP to inflicting a fire damage over time against adjacent enemies. The reason why we're here is to search for Oliveron. As is expected, items come in tiers. Apparently, each step up grants an additional secondary stat. Gear progression is like Monster Hunter, and I love it. You wear what you defeat, showing off proof of your exploits. In expected fashion, the UI tips me off to unique boss mechanics. Thank you. Additionally, the music indicates that the combat is serious. There's a cutscene at the end of the fight. We learn that Alvaron was not the villain, yet a victim of an imbalance of stasis. His soul hadn't completely reincarnated, and so a fraction remained and was corrupted. It needed to be freed in order to finish the process of rebirth. We easily could have been him had our souls not finished the process properly. We were able to apply a barrier to the crystal to contain the spread of stasis and balance its relationship to Wakfu. Moreover, someone has a mount, and I love it. Note, annoyingly, my recording software failed to properly capture about two hours worth of gameplay, namely the transition between the tutorial and the player's introduction to the larger game world. I'm devastated because there is an absolutely hilarious cutscene that I wanted to show you, yet I suppose it may be better for you to experience for yourself. Regardless, while I prefer to show and tell, let me explain what has visually been lost to the void. The bridge between the introduction and the main world is slightly jarring because it seems like the game has not been updated to reflect the player's experience because you then have to undergo a second tutorial. It's admittedly more advanced, yet comes across as if you have no experience in the game. I wish the developers modified the transition to feel smoother. Regardless, there is one more series of observations you should know before we wrap up our first impressions. The tutorial is a very close approximation of what you will be doing for the rest of your time in Wakfu. If you did not enjoy the tutorial, don't 
don't continue playing because the core loop does not change. You will be fighting groups of mobs in teams by means of the turn-based tactical engine to level up your combat level. You will be gathering ingredients from flora or fauna to improve your professions. You will be interacting with NPCs or player characters to progress quests or complete dungeons. If you did enjoy your time, you will have hundreds of hours of fun twists on the formula to which you have already been exposed. Each area has its own unique puzzles to solve, mob compositions, dungeons, loot, and more. There are collaborative quests that are akin to Warhammer Online's public quests or Guild Wars 2's events yet are simpler and less robust. Characters continue to gain level skills and class changing mechanics. You can level sidekicks to fill out your party and equip them. Even more, free players have premium sidekicks available each week similar to MOBA character lotteries. For each style of gameplay, there are NPCs that give zone agnostic quests that encourage exploration and completion sandbox style. Each zone has a main quest and moves you through the game in a loose yet open-ended manner. Colors continue to communicate to which element a creature may be attuned, and size plus anatomical features suggest a style of combat prowess. Similar to Final Fantasy XIV's green leaf status, newbies are highlighted, and higher level tunes can level sync to help. They are additionally rewarded for doing so, similar to Conquer Online's virtue system. If you die, the death penalty seems to be very forgiving, with the major tax being a few minutes of your time, although more experienced players can correct me here. Upon leaving the tutorial area, each battle has random and optional objectives to complete for additional rewards. In dungeons, there may May be more than one. These help add additional flavor to each battle without forcing a meta to emerge. If you enjoy Albion Online's Corrupted Dungeons, Waifu has a similar system for PvE VPers. And there's more! All done with silky smooth animations, a gorgeous soundtrack, beautiful world building, and exceptional storytelling, with a splash of whimsy included. Is Waifu fun? If you find yourself saying yes to some of the lists below, you should at least try Waifu. You can afford the cost of free. You like turn-based combat. You like tactical decision-making. You enjoy difficult PvE. You are patient to learn through your mistakes. You like build crafting. You like team-based games. You like complex systems. You appreciate humor and whimsy. You like gathering and crafting. You like a player-run economy. You enjoy political systems. You are intrigued by Wakfu's ecological system. You enjoy both PvE and PvP. You can afford $7 a month to progress faster. But even if Wakfu isn't your cup of tea, perhaps Dofus, Waven, or the Netflix series is. Thanks for watching.